All right, I would like to call this October 17th, 2022, Sylvania Board of Education meeting to order. Uh, Adam, would you call the roll? Ms. Hoffman? Here. Mrs. Conklin? Here. Mrs. Lavalette? Here. Mr. Feller? Here. Mrs. Johnson? Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Dr. Motley, we are with you. Thank you, Mr. Feller. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm following up. Um, I wanted to provide a response uh, based on the comments that we had at our last board meeting from a Sleepy Hollow resident and her concerns about noise from our athletic fields and lights and things of that nature. So um, Mr. Zeroff, Mr. Irwin, and myself met with Dr. Terry Keller, who's the interim president of Lourdes University, along with um, Janet Eaton-Smith, who is the athletic director of Lourdes University. And we met to discuss all the issues that were brought forward. Um, first of all, there is an acknowledgment that um, there has been significant growth in the Lord's athletic program over the last several years, and even more recently, they have included um, non-varsity sports for their students to participate in. So the perspective that if the fields are being used more than 10 years ago and even five years ago, the answer is yes. But typically, it's right now from what we understand, the fields are being used on average three to four days a week, depending on if there's championships or something like that, but typically three to four days a week. And the sports that are included are football, soccer, and lacrosse, as well as softball. So first I wanted to talk about music because there was a concern, one, about um, potential vulgarity in the language that's being used or heard in the music. Um, the loud, how loud the music is and when it's being played and how often. And um, it was our discussion that we've determined that music is played during Friday night games, and those are contests, and we also use it during warm-ups and also during our halftime. Um, however, interesting with Lords, and this was a caveat, um, their soccer team actually is quite international. They are 85% of the team, men's soccer team the players are from a variety of different countries and a variety of backgrounds and hence when they are playing different music they are playing international music that represents the countries in which um, or the nationalities in which these individuals are from um, I will also share with you that for late practices because sometimes Lord's practices believe it or not from 9 to 11 p.m. who knew um, they don't use our speakers. They actually use a boom box, but nothing too loud. Um, we at Northview, for our own athletics, we do use the speakers, but we only use the two that are mounted on the press box. There's a total of five speakers. Three are on the visitor side, two are on our press box, and those press box speakers are pointed down toward the stands so the people on the home side and the stands can have the best understanding of what's being conveyed by the press box. Um, in regards to explicit language, both sides, um, Northview actually uses a, an app called Neptune, and uh, Lord's University actually uses um, Spotify to actually only play clean music. There is no explicit language that is used. Um, app or Neptune, actually the one that we use for our district, it's all clean lyrics. So there was a question if perhaps some of the international music, they may think they're hearing something because it's not necessarily all in English. There are a variety of songs being played, but they assured us um, that they are not using explicit lyrics or music that has explicit lyrics. Um, the other piece as far as lights are concerned, during practice, we do use our stadium lighting, but it's only at 30% capacity. I learned something today that for us to use 100% of our lights, there has to be two keys that are used to turn on the lights at the stadium. Lourdes University, um, their coaches only have one key. So when they have late night practices and they're practicing for soccer, they do use our lights, but they are only at 30%. And that's to shine on the field, so obviously to support our athletes uh, from Lourdes. And our students, of course, do not practice that late. 
And in regards to the restrooms, uh, Lourdes was very candid and said it has been an issue, um, but they have documentation of communication with the other universities warning them and telling them that um, not using our restrooms is unacceptable. And this seems to be a problem in the location of the visitor concession stands, which are closest to Sleepy Hollow. Individuals going behind those concession stands to um, alleviate themselves, I'll put it that way. Um, instead of going to the restrooms across the way, is that accurate, Tim? Do you remember that correctly? Yeah, it looks like a, it looks like a restroom facility, but it's actually the concession stand. So instead of running all the way around to the restroom, they go behind the concession stand, which is closer to Sleepy Hollow. Correct. Homes where they have access to that taking place. So it has been addressed. Absolutely, and they said if we, we even want a copy of the documentation that they sent to their um, visiting teams that we could certainly secure that copy. But I wanted to make sure that um, we followed up and followed through with meeting with Lords and putting our heads together about addressing the concerns of our community members because that's a priority for us. And the only other thing that I have is we have parent-teacher conferences the end of next week, just brief announcements. Uh, Friday, we have our community tailgate at Northview High School. We're excited about that. We have um, our annual football game between Southview and Northview. And in addition, on Saturday, we have our Athletic Hall of Fame luncheon. And I believe that's at uh, the Country Club, um, Sylvania Country Club. I was going to say Highland Meadows, but it is Sylvania Country Club. So lots of great events. We had a great fall festival. Um, I was intrigued. We had a huge turnout. I volunteered for the chamber. I had my own little green vest and work in the crowd. It was great. Um, but we estimate there were over 35,000 individuals at the fall festival this year, record numbers. And Buster the Bus made his first appearance. That's his inaugural appearance. And he's the cutest little thing if you haven't seen him. He's a miniature school bus. He's a preschooler. And he is working with our preschool students and our uh, kindergarten through uh, second grade students about bus safety this week. And I got squirted by Buster the Bus because he was excited to see me and I got squirted. So it was all great. It was wonderful. It was cute. Um, and that's all I have, Mr. Feller. Great. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, we have a presentation from the Orlando Park System. Thank you, Mr. Feller. Thank you, Dr. Matt, for having us here today. <clears throat> My name is Mark Luthi, and I'm the chairman of the Citizens for Orlando Park System, working in support of the Issue 6 replacement levy that's on the ballot next month. Uh, I, want, I want to say, as a former board member from a long time ago, you've certainly upgraded your uh, meeting facility since I was on the board because we met in the Southview cafeteria, right? Not nearly as quiet <coughs> and nice as this. Uh, with me tonight are Erica Burry, who's the executive director of TOPS, and also Jason Mishka, one of the campaigns that are co-chairs. Um, in my experience on the board and on city council, uh, I've come to understand that citizens assume that elected officials have a handle on everything going on in town, right? And, and I think this probably does. Uh, so they ask your opinion on things like ballot issues. So we thought that it would be helpful for us with the vote coming up to uh, brief you so you can answer those questions appropriately and accurately. Thanks for having us tonight again. Um, as Mark said, my name is Jason Mishka. I'm one of the co-chairs for the uh, election campaign. And uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about the park system. Some of this is a reminder, some of it you may already know. Um, but Olander Park System is an Ohio Revised Code 1415 designated park district. Um, the boundaries for the park district is the Savannah School District. So there's some overlap between the city and the township and so on. Um, the parks uh, included in that have expanded beyond just the Olander Park. Um, so it's Olander Park, uh, the Sylvan Prairie Park, uh, Fossil Park, uh, Whetstone Park, and then also the Savannah Oaks Savannah, obviously right behind Savannah um, Southview High School, no, the Southview Oaks Savannah. For um, clarification purposes, um, this is a separate entity, of course, from the City of Savannah Parks, it's separate from the Savannah Rec District, and it is also separate from the Pluto Metro Parks. Um, the Lander Park System is funded by a five year levy. And that levy is set to expire on uh, August 30, or sorry, August 31st, December 31st of this year. 
Um, the amount of the levy is currently 0.8 mil, and what we're proposing is a replacement of that so this, at the same value, so this will not be a new tax. And we estimate that um, the annual cost for an uh, individual house um, with a uh, value of $250,000 is $56 per year. And that was based off, the 250 was based off of the annual value that we found for the Savannah area. Um, so Erica Burry is the director, the elected director of the uh, park system, and she's going to tell you about some of the improvements and the funds that have been used over the last couple of years and some planned um, expansion. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you again for making time for us today. I really appreciate it. Um, so as Jason said, we have a, a levy every five years. We come before the community, and it's kind of a, hey, how are we doing opportunity? Um, and five years ago, we were able to secure an increase, and we, I think, have done a really great job with those extra dollars. Uh, we put in a walking trail around Olander Park. We added a walking trail to Whetstone Park. We improved the sledding hill at Sylvan Prairie. We're doing extension, and we've done, and are continuing to work on extension, uh, extensive, thank you, uh, renovations at Fossil Park. Um, we've contracted with the Nature Conservancy to do uh, conservation work for us. Um, we have, you know, we were really active all during COVID, so even though we couldn't do in-person programming, we did a lot of virtual programming, we were able to really engage the community that way. And we were, we leveraged uh, $100,000 in grant dollars in the last five years um, for a number of projects. So we're, we, we feel like we did a pretty good job in terms of making improvements that were long needed to our park district. And we look forward in the next five uh, to doing additional projects, including some updates um, to current facilities. But one of the big things that we are working on and just actually met with the engineer's office today about was um, extending the University Parks Trail. So, the uni so Metro Parks is currently looking for funding to complete the section between Silica Road and Centennial Road. And the Olander Park System, we would be responsible for taking that portion from Centennial Road all the way up to Silver Prairie Park and potentially connecting with the Timberstone Campus um, at Her Road and Sylvania Avenue. So we're really excited about that project. We're looking at construction in 2025. That's going to take a significant amount of revenue, and we're starting to kind of build our bank up a little bit now to do that project. Um, we're also looking, we have access to ODOT funds, the 1545 Park District, so we will be putting a um, new entrance at Sylvan, on Sylvania Avenue at Sylvan Prairie, and we're also looking at securing some land and water funds for a uh, restroom and shelter facility there. So we have a lot of projects that we have planned for the next five years, um, but that bike trail, that's, that's like two and a half million dollars, so that's going to be our big, uh, our big pie in the sky piece. Um, do you guys have any questions? I didn't want to go too long today, but you all know how to get in touch with us. I, I don't know if you received this in your packets or not, but I'll leave this here. You can It's just some general information about the ballot measure and about what we've been up to and what we are planning to do. Uh, we also did have a new mission and vision statement that we're super excited about this year. We did a strategic plan. so um, And we're going to launch a new logo and name oh. after the levy. Though. So, <laughs> I don't want to confuse people. anybody. I think you guys do a great job. Thank you so much. The park system in Slovenia is second to none. I it's, love the prairie. Yeah. And the prairie is yeah. my favorite. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I, one question I did have, though, um, uh, dogs at Olander. Is there ever discussion about allowing do uh, dogs? All Her dogs time. are really cute. I'm Too many not geese. asking for myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, the big, so the big challenge we have at Olander is space, right. really. And, and obviously, I hear this question regularly from folks, like, why can't I bring my dogs to Olander? And I have a dog, so I totally get that. I wish I could bring my dog to work, right? But um, because of the size and uh, the massive use of that park, adding dogs to the mix with the bicycles and the people mm -hmm. and the kids on tricycles and strollers just is a little bit more than we feel is a healthy use of that park on top of... You know, dogs poop, and there's that mess to clean up, and we have a water body of water that we want people to be able to swim in and fish in, 
and so we want to keep that as healthy as possible. So with the soil composition, which is basically sand that just, just goes straight through to the water, we want to make sure we're keeping that, that water body safe. And quite honestly, it's a resource for people who don't like dogs. Uh, we get a lot of folks who come to Olander instead of going to Wildwood because there are no dogs at Olander Park. So it's a great resource for folks who would prefer to, to get their outdoor engagement without, you know, furry friends. I see that. And the prairie fills that void. It's a That's great, exactly it's a great right. place for dogs. Yeah, mm -hmm. Silver Prairie and the Quarry Ridge Bike Trail, we, you know, we always say, hey, you know, right. you can just go down the road and the, there's a great park there to, to take your puppy to. So thanks for that question. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Okay, appreciate thank it. you guys so much. I really Thanks. appreciate your time. Let me just say, Ms. Conklin, that I was working Fall Festival yesterday, uh, handing out stickers right, for, for Willander, and I got that question yeah. about 15 times. <laughs> so I'm glad that she's here because I would have all I could tell the people yesterday was I'm in sales, not me. <laughs> <laughs> We hope this was helpful for you today. Uh, that was what we set out to provide was some fact-based for you all. I will say, though, that as a, either a board or as individual board members, we would be delighted if you decided to give us some sort of an endorsement. We understand that that's not board policy, but if it, what the city council did was pass a resolution to them, every council member sent us a letter of endorsement as well. So not necessary, just a little uh, add-on if you want to take some action on anything. But in the meanwhile, thank you so much for having us, and please uh, talk to your friends and neighbors about issue six. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much. We have in the past endorsed homelanders levies. Like I think we always have been supportive of that. Yeah. We're your great partners with us, so yeah. I would make a motion to endorse. I'll second. Any discussion? All right. Call the roll. Julie. Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Greg? Yes. Jill? Yes. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. Really Thanks. Thank you. our expectations. Thank <laughs> you. All right, now we are at the first opportunity for public participation for agenda items. I don't believe so. Jason, you signed up, but that was for the Olander, correct? Right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, Dr. Motley, we're back with you. Thank you, Mr. Feller. I recommend item 5.1, the acceptance of a donation of five boxes of composition books from Ms. Nema Nagore. I'll second. Any discussion? All right, call the roll. Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Greg? Yes. Jill? Yes. Thank you for that gift. Awesome. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I recommend item 5.2, which is an overnight field trip for the South Lee High School coach and legal advisor, Mr. Dennis Lyle, to accompany eight students to Chicago, Illinois, to attend the Empire Mock Trial International Tournament. It's a mouthful. <laughs> it's a mouthful. I'll second. Any discussion? They won this before and were like world champs. I know. They're yep. awesome. They're so good. All right, Adam, call the roll. Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Greg? Yes. Jill? Yes. Thank you. I recommend item 5.3 for approval. It is a memorandum of understanding between the Savannah School District Board of Education and our Savannah Education Association to agree to parameters for the remaining part of this school year for collaboration days for our staff. I'll approval. I'll second. Any discussion? And this, this is just for this school year, correct? Just for the school year does okay. not set a precedent for any school year moving forward. Okay. Any other discussion? All right, call the roll. Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Greg? Yes. Jill? Yes. Thank you. I recommend item 5.4, a memorandum of understanding for a project unify coordinator. Again, this is between our school board and the Sylvania Education Association. I move approval. A second. Any discussion? All right, call the roll. Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Greg? Yes. Jill? Yes. Thank you. I recommend item 5.5, an MOU, another memorandum of understanding for the resident educator supplemental positions. I'll second. Any discussion? All right, call the roll. 
Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Greg? Yes. Jill? Yes. Thank you. I recommend item 5.6, a policy revision for a first read. This is policy 5410, and it uh, actually outlines board policy for promotion, academic acceleration, placement, and retention. I'll move approval. I'll second. Any discussion? We cool. technically wouldn't need a, it's just first read. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, you're right. It's first read. So it's on here so as action, though. It, it does say action, but yeah, it's just a first read. Yeah. I have to since we can memorialize it. Then you want us to vote or no? Item 5.7 is our policies for a second read as listed. We are seeking approval for weapons on, or items on, policies on weapons, a preschool program, career advising, there's a host of policies for a second read and to be adopted by our board. I'll move approval. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Any discussion? Call the roll. Uh, Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Greg? Yes. Jill? Yes. Thank you. I recommend item 5.8, which is a resolution in support of the City of Savannah's downtown public improvement efforts and the use of the tax increment financing um, per the exhibit as included on the board agenda. I'll move approval of the resolution. I'll second. Any discussion? Hi. Adam, you're, you're real comfortable with this, right? Yeah, absolutely. I've been working with Bill and, and their... Uh, their team for a couple months now and um, really appreciate their collaborative efforts on this I mean uh, for the first 10 years um, and then 11 through 30 will be made whole and, and receive all the tax money so sounds like a great project thank you for your work on that. yeah thank you yeah for, thank you you explained it so well I didn't have any questions <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to know I was ignoring it yeah. <laughs> any other discussion all right call the roll Julie yes Kim yes Tammy? Yes. Greg? Yes. Jill? Yes. Thank you. That concludes my items. Thank you. Mr. Diversity? I am you. recommending items 6.1 through 6.3 on the consent agenda basis. 6.1 are licensed substitute teachers. 6.2 is a licensed unpaid lead. And 6.3 are licensed extra duty. I'm going to move on a consent agenda basis, item 6.1 through 6.3. I'll second. Thanks, Bill. Any discussion? Call the roll. Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Greg? Yes. Jill? Yes. Thank you. I'm recommending item 7.1 through 7.5 on a consent agenda basis. 7.1 are classified new hires. 7.2 are classified personnel changes. 7.3 are classified resignations. 7.4 is for a classified substitute. And 7.5 are just the board approval of our sub wages uh, this school year. I'll move approval on a consent agenda basis, item 7.1 through 7.5. No, second. Uh, discussion? Uh, I have a question. So we've got two resignations for paraprofessionals at Central Trail right. and a meeting or two ago we had a couple speakers that spoke about that. Is that... A, they are not additional. Those are the two. Those are the two? They were not okay. passed the Are we... I'm assuming we have efforts to try and fill those positions or... They are. Help? They're open and we're doing pretty well. I looked... Um, you know, ideally we need five at mm -hmm. Central Trail and last week uh, we had four actual professionals with one extra sub teacher filling the five spots. Okay. We're still actively trying to fill a handful of the spots throughout the district. Okay. <coughs> do, do we have any idea? <coughs> I mean, are they leaving for different reasons? They didn't seem to be leaving to go work in another district, so it's not that they're leaving to seek the same position somewhere else. Um, you know, I did not talk to them personally, but from what I understand, it's, well, it's, a, it's a difficult job, and then when they're shorthanded as well frustrations we come up there and um, so I think they've just ran it in higher ways. Do you find that the substitute wages are adequate to attract 
substitutes? It's a good question. We ran something over the summer where all of our, our neighboring districts, we had a spreadsheet that was going around with all of our local districts to see if one person was more competitive than another. And we were all about the same wages for each of our spots. So, um, you know, it, it's hard and the wages are not, you know, huge. Uh, but they're competitive. And I think more so than, than the wages is just the workforce that we just don't have a workforce out there. And what we had before that was really beneficial was we had a sub pool of classified people that we could pull and use. And what we've done, because the workforce is so small, we've kind of depleted that sub pool. And those subs that we had are now contract employees. So not only do we have to continually hire new contract employees, but we need to replenish the sub pool as well. Hopefully, the uh, bus looked great yesterday coming down the parade. So if you saw the bus come down here, we had really big advertisement on the side of those buses. And, um, you know, a lot of these midday jobs are perfect for some of our, our parents and uh, neighbors and things like that. So hopefully 35,000 people at the Fall Festival Parade, I need about seven. <laughs> so, but our wages are competitive with the like jobs from other countries. But I, I guess I would, like, you know, on that, and I mean, I know we just approved it, like substitute wages, but, I mean, it's a tough job. It is. If you're a professional, and, I mean, do we need to look at maybe bumping that up a little bit? I mean, that's a, it's a tough job, you know, and it, not all of the positions are necessary and important, but, you know, that one in particular, it's, it's hard for a classroom to function without, very difficult. you know, yeah, it's very difficult for the classroom to function without, you know, appropriate coverage with, you know, paraprofessionals. It is, and that's something, I mean, I have to talk with Adam about, just because we gotta, you know, we always have to think about being physically responsible as well. And so, uh, that's something we would have to look into to see if, if it is. I know right now we're comparing. Uh, you know, I can't speak for where that wage would be. Fears would be you raise that wage up, there's still a shortage of workforce. So now, we're gonna reward the people that are here for us right now. Will it attract other individuals to come and work for Savannah schools? I don't know because the workforce, you know, every conference I've been to over the last handful of months, we're not alone. This is across the board in every school district. So I don't know if a higher wage will attract more people because the workforce is short. Not sure. Yeah, I think it's something we continue to monitor, continue to talk to other schools, and make sure that we're competitive for the time being. And, and look at an adjustment for next year if we need to. I think we need to look at the possibility that our competition isn't just other school districts. It's you know people who are taking positions in other areas because they can earn a higher wage. You know, people who weird. might be wanting to do this. So yeah, yeah, a lot of easier job. Right. Easier job at a higher wage. Right. Absolutely. Our biggest selling point right now, and we try to sell this to write it, you can get a higher wage in other places, but our biggest benefit that we have is we are a public school district. We have a great benefit package, mm -hmm. and we have a great retirement. And a lot of those other places don't have that. Mm -hmm. and so we, we're trying to screen that and sell that because a lot of times people aren't looking that far or that deep. They just look at their hourly wage, yeah. not knowing that there is a really nice benefit package attached to that, and there's retirement in there as well. Yeah, and the other competitor we have is, is the business workforce, and they have the ability to increase you know, costs or increase... Yeah. Revenue side of things a little bit easier than we can. So when it comes to discussing the competition in that regards, it's hard to compare because of on the budgetary side. But it doesn't. There's a correlation here between sub wages and contracted wages as well. And remember, contracted wages are going to be a negotiated item. And so if we raise our sub wages, are almost going to match what our contracted wages are. And there's going to have to be a correlation between what our contracted wages are which is a negotiated item versus where our sub-wages are, which we decide on. So. Have we uh, done any exit interviews with these folks? Officially, no. I'm wondering if that might be helpful. It's a great suggestion. Yeah. Get an idea of what... Why? Yeah. I like whether, whether it's, you know, this isn't what I thought it was, I, it's just not something I don't think I can continue, or wages or whatever, but it will at least be helpful to to have some feedback from them. Great. Do you have any idea how long term the employees were? Were they all over the place or were they fairly recent? Well, you know, and we have these two resignations here, yeah. but I, I would 
now think we have a mass exit of people leaving. And so I know for some of these individuals, they were less than a 10 year. All right, any other discussion? Right. And call roll. Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Greg? Yes. Jill? Yes. Thank you. I'm recommending approval of items 8.1 through 8.4 on a consent agenda basis. 8.1 are supplemental positions for the 22-23 school year. 8.2 are some corrections from previous um, supplemental position postings. And 8.3 is a resignation of supplemental positions for the I will approve on a consent agenda basis items 8.1. No, Julie. Oh, you weren't done. Well, no. 8.4. 8. 8.3. 8. 8. 8. I don't see. There's 8.4 too. 8.4 is volunteers. Well, 8.3 has got the 21 22 school year listed. Oh, I see. So I. Oh, 8.1 does? 8. Oh, 8. 8. 8. 8. oh, that's right, 8.3 does. And I pull 8.3 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. off so I get a correction on that to make it short. Oh, it does? Yeah, it's It's just a, it's just got the wrong year list. Okay, so I'm going to approve all. I'm going to amend it on consent agenda basis items 8.1, 8.2, and 8.4. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to amend it. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to amend it. I'll second. Any discussion? Okay, call the roll. Who seconded that? Kim. Kim. Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Greg? Yes. Jill? Yes. All right, now we are at uh, board committee reports. Kim? Um, I did not attend SSPO, so I will defer to Jill on that. Um, communications, this went out. I hope you all saw it. I want to thank Amy. I think it looks really great. I'm very, I think it looks awesome, and I think it's a great um, reach out to not just our parents but to everyone out in the community so kudos on that I got my capital conference packet in the mail last night where I get to go for the meeting <laughs> <laughs> so excited about have fun yep. that's all I've got um, I left early from I've spa got stuff. so she's got bath huh? I did get to go to the Harbor Hills volleyball game and they did a really good job. They were playing against an undefeated team, but they really, they did a really good job. I was very proud of them. I also went to South View's um, play this weekend, and they also did a great job. Yeah, I forgot one thing. Yes. The parade participation was amazing. Wasn't it? First for the schools. I mean, the bus was cool, but also um, saw principals, teachers, Kids, patrols, I mean, obviously Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, but it was really, and I took some pictures and I haven't posted them yet because I'm fighting a cold here, but um, it was just really good to see. I really, so and I saw you manning the dino run. And yeah, that was fun too. Yeah, <laughs> it was just it a was great fun. community. Event. It was, it was very, it was, it was wonderful. Real good. It we, was saw, good. we saw their heads fly by, we were at the spa too. Yeah. <laughs> the first relay though, they took off before we said go. So we had to quickly pick up our <laughs> ribbon because they were just running. We, went, we didn't even say go yet, but it was great. Nice. Those dinosaurs nice. were always really eager. <laughs> <laughs> Where do they get the dinosaur pool from? I'm curious. It's just chamber volunteers? I, I, they're children, they're kids, so I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, they're children. Yeah. I'm they're not just sure how they go about doing that. I think that event's just getting greater and greater every, every year. Yeah. It's amazing how far it's come for the last mm -hmm. 20. I mean, I remember taking my nephew there when he was two and it was nothing like this. Yeah, it has really grown. Yeah. And Tammy and I did a little stay at the Savannah um, school's table and nobody was there. Um, During so the parade? No, from like, what, one to two? Yeah, that's the so parade. That's yeah, 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 that's the parade. parade. It's still very busy. It is. Yeah, so we yeah. went and we... Handed out papers and candy. We did. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, we'll have to have you guys join us next year and just okay. volunteer your time and yeah, come and join the tent. We're right. there from like 10 in the morning till 4, we so come where you're embedded. It's always put out to the board, too, to like take a shift here and there. So. Really? Well, yeah. I've only known yeah. since COVID we didn't have it. Yeah. Last year we had individuals that had their own, yeah. so yeah. it's a little different during that time. But I think as a show of unity, 
we really should have you sign up or just come when you're able and hang out with us because we have administrators that are manning not during the parade time because we want to see our kids in the parade and encourage and support them but feel free come on down and hang out with us we'd love to have you get you some shirts and stuff swag it'd be good all right um i don't have a whole lot this time we've got lmrc tomorrow yeah. and i've got a sage yard meeting next week um i just did want to say congratulations to our high school runners the nll cross country championships mm -hmm. was saturday and all of our runners did a great job. My daughter and Tammy's daughter finished next to each other, so that was kind of cool. This was ahead of mine. Um, <laughs> 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 Not by right much. Ahead. Not by much. Um, so that was that was a that was a great event, and a lot of fun. So that's all I got. Jill. Um, I first of all, I'd second what Kim said uh, as part of the communication committee. Um, congrats to Amy for the newsletter and all the hard work that went into it. Um, had. Uh, at the SSPO meeting um, last week, we had um, a transportation presentation by Mr. Wolpert. And um, the, the folks that were attending the meeting, I think, found it very, very informative and helpful to hear directly from them what's going on and what's, you know, what they're trying to do to, to make sure all the kids get to school in, in a timely fashion. Um, we have an upcoming uh, SCS, Sylvania Community Services meeting this week. And last week also had a strategic plan meeting with Josh's group. And we're moving forward with uh, the strategic plan. That's it. That was, that's it. That's <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. The Sylvania Prevention Alliance had a, has a lot going on right now. The, um, the golf outing was very successful. It exceeded the uh, fundraising goal by about $1,000, which is great. Thank you, Greg, for supporting, and everybody else who supported. Um, uh, there's a film festival, film festival for Youth Above the Noise. These submissions are due by the end of this month, I think. Um, and the festival will be on uh, November 15th at Lourdes at 6.30. Uh, drug take back day countywide is October 29th. Um, I think those locations, there's 18 locations across Lucas County. I think they're listed on the website. It's over drive through. Yeah, which is awesome. Uh, that's great that's for that's people who don't, don't want to get out of their car. Um, the hot cocoa run is actually going to be not, I'm excited, not President's Day weekend. It'll be February 25th. They've done it President's Day weekend the last several years, and we never attend because we're usually out of town. So mm -hmm. I can make my kids do that this year. Good. Um, and, oh, the poli uh, they put up a new scoreboard at McCord that is up. Looks, fam looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. I saw a picture. I haven't seen yeah, it in person. It looks right. great. Um, oh, and the officers, the police officers did say that there's going to be an extra police presence at the Northview Southview game on um, this weekend, just to be safe. That's it. Great. Thank you. May I make one comment? I suppose. All right, thank you. I just want to acknowledge um, Dean Barrett. Uh, custodian at Southview. Uh, we had yes. a small fire at our building last Thursday and because of Dean and his fearlessness ran toward the fire and did his best to put it out with an extinguisher and he was recognized on the uh, website for the um, fire department and we plan to invite Dean to an upcoming board meeting and give him recognition and a commendation on behalf of the district because he absolutely was brave in his effort to go see where the smoke was coming and what it was doing where so many times people run the other way. It could have been mm -hmm. much worse. It could have. Yeah. If it wasn't for his response, it could have been. But we were just thankful for his quick response and his bravery, and we will be inviting him to a board meeting so that he can be recognized. Great. Thank you. Um, now we are at the second opportunity for public participation for non-agenda items. And seeing none, we do not have, have executive tonight. So I will make a motion that we adjourn. I will second. Any discussion? <laughs> Adam, call the roll. <laughs> Julie? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Greg? Yes. Joe? Yes. Thank you.